Chirenge bendi chatu tieni tijisamale Mkala ngonya janya maza kuchire zofunika Tisamale mapili titali mombi tengu So ibaza kumafaki tale titaye mosamala Taka yoli mayakuka, ndiku kokoloka Vula ikufuta, tiko likutentedwa So sezi chifu kwa chaku onongeka kwa chirenge dwe Ako mama bungwe, amipingo makampani Tirindi unindo, otete za chirenge dwe Diena tose tizitete za chirenge dwe Taka yoli mayaku Land is a key asset for economic growth and development in Malawi. The economy continues to rely heavily on agriculture and natural resources for a significant share of gross domestic product, national food needs, employment and export revenue. Agriculture, natural resource use and other land-based activities are also the primary sources of livelihoods for most Malawians. Malawi is being paraded as a model for a country that can feed itself through various initiatives the government has implemented. Such initiatives include farm input subsidies, incorporation of new hybrid varieties and new farming techniques, among others. Above all, the political will of the highest office of this country has enabled the country to be a shining star when it comes to food production. Indeed, the country has turned itself from a net importer of food to the exporter of food to other countries. For all the success to take place, all those activities have to be done on land. The average land holding size per household in Malawi is 1.2 hectares. Available land per capita is estimated at 0.33 hectares. Per capita, land holdings have however been declining from about 0.4 hectares in 1970 to about 0.2 hectares in 2007, partly due to a high population growth rate that has led to intergenerational fragmentation of land holdings. In addition, per capita land holdings are highly skewed with the smallholders holding only 0.23 hectares per capita compared to the rich who hold 0.42 hectares per capita. Agriculture, the mainstay of the economy, is dominated by an estimated 6 million smallholder farmers who cultivate fragmented customary land with limited use of productivity enhancing technologies. Smallholder farmers cultivate mainly food crops such as maize, cassava and sweet potatoes to meet subsistence requirements. The Malawi Growth and Development Strategy, MGDs, recognize the importance of both agriculture and land. Many of its facets are focused on developing this sector. For instance, the MGDs seek to heighten agriculture productivity, increase agro-processing for export, maintain biodiversity in agriculture, and ensure tenure security and equitable access to land. It is hoped that this will allow Malawi to attain broad-based social and economic development that respects the ecological integrity of land and land-based resources. Access to land and tenure broadly comprises a system of rights and institutions governing access to and use of land. It includes the rules and regulations developed by societies to determine how land is accessed, allocated, used and exchanged. Cultural, political, legal and economic factors mediate land tenure. Land rights and the way in which they are issued and enforced have major implications for the use and management of land as well as on the social and economic development of Malawi and its citizens. There are three categories of land tenure in Malawi. Customary, private and public land tenure. Customary land falls under the jurisdiction of traditional authorities and is administered under customary law. The distribution and control of this land is vested in the hands of traditional leaders. Public land is held by the government and set aside through appropriate legislation for such reasons as national development, security and tourism. 
passed agricultural policies that tended to favor private ownership of land for lucrative commercial farming, encouraged the conversion of customary land to private ownership. Successive censuses have indicated that Malawi's population is growing rapidly. This has led to growth in agriculture activities, both at national level policy to enhance food security and economic growth. The growth of agriculture activities has resulted in the dwindling of forests and the general declining of soil productivity due to increased erosion and reduction in the soil fertility status. There has also been encroachment of settlement and cultivation in protected areas, although the extent of this has not been quantified at national level. Encroachment in Kasungu National Park and other protected areas, for instance, is a typical example. A recent study by Total Land Care indicates that in Chia Lagoon catchment area was increased human activity from 1972 to 2000, resulting in rapid changes taking place in the watershed, such as increased agricultural activities and more land being put to less vegetation cover, exposing it to other environmental hazards. The changes underscore the increased intensity of activities in the watershed, resulting in the depletion of forest resources and increased agriculture and environmentally unfriendly practices. Out of the 32,898.6 hectares, only 5% changed from other land use or land cover types to Miombo woodlands between 1972 and 2000. This implies that few activities are being implemented within the watershed to protect the existing forests and to regenerate the degraded forests. This declining productive capacity of the land is being attributed to the deterioration of soil structure and fertility. The direct cause of land degradation is inappropriate land use and management practices by various land users such as smallholder farmers, estate farmers, road and building constructors, traders in forests and wildlife products and artisans. On the other hand, there are numerous environmental challenges posed by land and agriculture in the country. The national high population density and the predominance of agriculture livelihoods have put serious pressure on land resources. People seeking land for cultivation have deforestated vast tracts of woodlands clearing the vegetation that holds soil in place during heavy rains. This has led to drastic soil erosion and degradation as valuable nutrients are flooded into rivers where they disturb fish habitat and the generation of hydroelectricity. The result has been a sharp decline in agricultural productivity and increasing dependence on costly artificial fertilizers. This increases food insecurity, as does Malawi depends on rain-fed agriculture and related vulnerability to climate change. However, there are many opportunities to improve the situation. Reforestation should be aggressively pursued to hinder nutrient and soil loss. Farmers can be motivated to do through international initiatives that fund the conservation of forest carbon sink or clean development management. Dependence on artificial fertilizers can be reduced by encouraging cultivators to adopt conservation tillage, use of compost and intercrop with nitrogen-producing legumes. High numbers of livestock provide an opportunity to develop better livestock management. Existing irrigation projects can be extended to many areas. Water retention and management programs should be implemented in areas with less water. Overall, the importance of land and agriculture to Malawi's social, political and economic development, as well as sustainable resource management, cannot be overemphasized. The limited amount of land available, economic dependence on agriculture and the need to meet the demands of ever-increasing population make it imperative that land must be put to use for which it is ecologically and economically most suited. In order to avoid this, government has put in place policies that guide ownership, secure tenure, promote investment and ensure sustainable long-term use of this limited resource. 
the increase in cases of encroachments and land-related disputes is a manifestation of the urgent need to implement the aspirations of the 2002 National Land Policy in totality, and this requires building the prerequisite institutional and legal frameworks to support its implementation. <laughs>